The 15th podcast is about acid and base indicators and the pH scale. So in the previous podcast, we've seen the basic composition of acids and bases. But in appearance, when we look at these liquids, they're often just colorless liquids because they're uh, dissolved, their compounds dissolved in water. So we use indicators to determine what we have, whether we've got acid or base and the strength of these things. And we've got several at our uh, disposal, some of which we've seen in class. We've got litmus paper, phenolphthalene, which is a, a liquid indicator, universal indicator paper, and pH sensors. Let's take a look at litmus paper first. Litmus red and litmus blue. So litmus red paper, as we can see from the pictures here, when dipped into an acid solution, nothing happens. When we dip it into a base solution, however, the paper goes blue. With litmus blue paper dipped into acid, the blue paper turns pink or reddish in color. And when it's dipped into a base, we see that there's no change. Normally, we use these papers together because, as you can probably see, if we dip the red paper into acid, it goes pink. But in fact, if we dip the red paper into water, it will stay pink. If we dip the blue paper into base, it stays blue. But if we dip the blue paper into water, it also stays blue. So we can't tell what, really whether we have an acid or a base with just litmus red or litmus blue on their own. So we need to use them together. Phenolphthalein indicator is a transparent liquid. Here's a dropper with a drop hanging out. So it's a transparent liquid. But when we drop it into an acid, we see that, well, nothing happens. An acid solution does not change the color of phenolphthalein liquid. But if we drop it into a base solution, we see a very dramatic change um, to this beautiful magenta color. In fact, phenolphthalein changes from transparent to pink at a very precise pH level. And for that reason, chemists often use it to find the exact concentration of uh, acid or base solutions. Next, we've got universal indicator. Universal indicator, it's a, a pale yellowy orange color when it's dry out of the packet. But when we dip it into acid, a relatively strong acid, it changes uh, to a, a deep red color. And when we put it into a strong base, then it changes into a, uh, a purple color like that. In water, which is a neutral, um, no, not an acid or a base, we can see the color changes a little and it turns into a sort of a pale green. And here we have the various colors we can achieve, all the way ranging from strong acid to strong base with neutral water in the middle. So here we have a, a weak acid becoming strong, and here we have a weak base becoming a strong base. So the previous two, the litmus paper and the phenolphthalein, are really qualitative indicators of acid or base. But universal indicator does give us the opportunity for quantitative measurements, because these colors here link closely to a scale called a pH scale, which measures quantitatively the strength of acid or base. So the pH scale, it measures the strengths of acids and bases, and it runs from around about 1 to 14. It's a measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. And uh, if we remember, the presence of hydrogen ions indicates acidness. And the fewer there are, uh, the more likely we've got a base. Base hydroxide ions are normally present in strong bases. And when the number of hydroxide ions outweighs the number of hydrogen ions, we have a base. When the number of hydrogen ions outweighs the number of hydroxide ions, then we have an acid. The lower the pH number, the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions. So pH 1 
are the strongest acids, pH 14 are the strongest bases. At pH 7, the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions are present in equal numbers, so the acidness and baseness cancels each other out, if you like, and we don't have acid or base, we have a neutral solution. So pure water is neutral. Hydrochloric acid is a, is a strong acid, and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Now here's some examples of uh, substances that are fairly common. As I said, we've got hydrochloric acid as a strong acid, pH 2. Uh, sodium hydroxide down the bottom, or bleach, as a strong base. Um, water's not here, but it would be around about 7. So we can see that milk is slightly acidic, definitely a weak acid, as is beer and carbonated drinks, fizzy drinks. Vinegar becoming more strong, lemon juice and stomach acid a very strong acid to help break down your food. Blood, a weak base, also seawater. Baking soda, dissolved in water, gives us a weak base solution. Antacid for curing upset stomachs, a slightly stronger base. Cleaning ammonia, very strong base to sodium hydroxide. A lot of cleaning products are strong bases. We're going to take a look at an applet now, uh, which was uh, produced by PHET Interactive Simulations, University of Colorado. And this allows us to, to actually see the molecules in an acid or a base to visualize what's going on. So we have a uh, container here with the liquid in. We have a pH probe at the top, and we can change that pH probe to universal indicator paper if we want to. Um, currently, the liquid we're looking at is just water. We have the ability to look at the molecules in the water. So with this special magnifying glass, we can see all the grayed out uh, water molecules there, but we can see a, a few uh, ones that are colored. Now these are water molecules that have uh, dissociated, we could say, into hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions. We can think of this as a hydrogen ion. It's really a water molecule with an extra hydrogen stuck to it. The important thing to note is that there are equal numbers of each. These are hydrogen ions, the red ones, and these are hydroxide ions. They're present in equal numbers, so they cancel out. So as we would expect, in that case with water, pH 7. If we look at the pH paper, the universal indicator paper, dip it in the water, compare it, and we can see it compares favorably with a 7 on that chart. Now let's take a look at a strong acid. A strong acid here represented by HA, H for hydrogen, and A for the other part of the acid. Uh, and the strong acid completely dissociates, breaks apart to form negative ions and hydrogen ions. And we can see that in this picture, we cannot see any more of the uh, acid acids left. It's completely dissociated. Strong acid, if we use the pH probe, pH of 2. If we use the pH paper, we can see that that also looks about right for a pH of 2. Let's now look at a weak acid. So a weak acid, there's our acid there. This time the acid is not completely dissociated. You can see plenty of uh, acid particles in the mix there. If I, if I hide the solvent, we can see that much more clearly. These little blobs represent the acid. So we haven't got as much uh, hydrogen ions, um, as many hydrogen ions present. So the acid is weaker. 4.5. Let's have a look at the pH paper. Let's dip it in. Okay, so again, yep, 4 or 5, something like that. Looks about right. Let's take a look at a strong base. Strong base, uh, we can see that the base here, represented by MOH, we can see it's a hydroxide. Strong bases are normally hydroxides. Completely dissociates in the, in the water to produce the uh, positive ions and the negative hydroxide ions. There are no more particles of, um, of the base left in there. It's completely dissociated. It's a strong base. pH 12, we can see there. 
we look at the pH paper, dip it in, yeah, pH 12, I agree with that. Let's look at a weak base here, a weak base, we hide the solvent, we can see plenty of the base is still there, um, so it's not completely dissociated. We have hydroxide ions and positive ions, but we've still got plenty of base that is not broken up, not dissociated. Um, as a result, it's a weak uh, base. pH 9.5 is what it's coming out to be. Let's dip that in, have a look. Absolutely, pH 9 would be about right. So in summary, we have indicators to tell us what we have, whether we have acids or base. Some of them are qualitative indicators, such as litmus paper and phenolphthalein, and some are more quantitative, such as universal indicator paper and uh, pH probes. pH scale runs from 1 acids, strong acids, all the way through 14 strong bases, with 7 in the middle being neutral, and pure water is neutral.